Psych Minded Media presents Best Psychology on Film with your host, Dr. Catherine Marshall Woods. Best Psychology on Film is also a book available online where books are sold. Today's featured guest, Joyce Gilliard. Welcome to Best Psychology on Film. I'm Dr. Catherine Marshall Woods, your host. When you are on set after a long day, returning home safely is a concern that may be at the forefront of your mind. Joyce Gilliard, founder of the nonprofit I Save TV and Film, holds the mission of work, be safe, and go home. Her film Daddy's Home offers audience and fellow filmmakers the importance of those values. Welcome to the show, Joyce. How are you? Hello, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. I was very lucky to have learned about your film, Daddy's Home, when it was really in pre-production. You began to tell me about iSafe um, and your mission. Can you tell us a little bit about this nonprofit? Well, iSafe TV and Film, it stands for Industry Safety Awareness for Everyone. And I started iSafe TV and Film after I became injured on a film set in 2014 and my coworker was killed when we were working on a railroad trestle. And ever since that tragedy happened, it became my mission to make sure that I bring safety awareness to crew members and cast who are in the film industry and the people who are new to the industry so that they're aware of safety and um, make decisions that will make sure that they stay safe, work, be safe, and go home. That is such a horrible beginning to this beautiful mission that you do have. And I'm so happy to hear that you use that experience to really create something in order to make sure others remain safe. When you were thinking about the creation of this company, did you feel like most individuals in the industry also had similar concerns of being safe on set? Yes, I uh, I do believe that a lot of people had uh, reservations about being safe on set way before the tragedy even happened. And it was always something that people thought of, but it was not something that was talked about often because the same decisions were make, being made, the choices were being made that would constantly put crew members in a compromised position. And people were always afraid to speak up when they were feeling safe or when they weren't feeling safe on set. And that's one of the reasons I have iSafe TV and film so that it can promote safety awareness and encourage people to speak up when they're not feeling safe on set. Since you've created iSafe TV and film, what have you seen happen with individuals um, that work with you? Oh, wow. It's, since I've created iSafe TV and film, I've noticed the shift in how crew members think and react to different situations. I've noticed people not being afraid to speak up to the powers that be. I've noticed that when uh, different scenes are being shot, they make sure they have safety meetings in the beginning of, you know, beginning of the day. Uh, People, when they still feel a little reserved about saying something, they'll wear my T-shirts, which speaks volumes because it says work, be safe, go home. So that's the visible aspect of my nonprofit so that they can see uh, to be safe. And I've just noticed it across the board. People are talking about safety more now than ever. And even now with the COVID situation, It's even bringing safety to the forefront more than it has ever been in the, I mean, as long as I've been in the film industry. You know, one of the things that I just wanted to highlight when I met you and you told me about iSafe TV and film is that I was thinking, what 
resources and strength you had to be injured and then turn this into something that could help you, but also could help a lot of other individuals in the industry. Um, we, as psychologists, actually have a word for that, which is sublimation. And it's a really um, sophisticated way of coping with something that's really difficult. It's when you are experiencing something that's really hard and you turn it into something that could be profitable or even, again, helpful to other people, not just yourself. And so when I met you, I thought, wow, this woman has so many uh, mental health resources available to her that she could turn a tragedy into something that can really help other people. Wow. Wow. I didn't even know that I even had it in me, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't even know. But, you know, I feel like God puts things in your life and in your path and brings out certain aspects of you that you didn't even realize that you even had. I like when you said that individuals will wear your shirt and that alone speaks volumes and keeps individuals thinking all the time to be safe and the goal is to go home safely. That even if someone has trepidation to be able to speak their mind on set and be able to note their concerns, they can just wear your t-shirt or wear your sweatshirt and that then allows individuals to know where they are with where they're thinking and what they may be feeling. Yes, yes. And people, crew members and cast across the country are doing just that. Just that, wearing the t-shirts or the sweatshirts, just so that it'll be a visible reminder for everyone to work safely on set. So why create a film, Daddy's Home? Where was the inspiration for this film? Well, the inspiration for Daddy's Home occurred when I was driving home, no, driving to work at three o'clock in the morning. I was driving to work. It was like three in the morning. It was still pitch black outside. I was super tired, exhausted, super sleepy, and trying to remain focused on the road, on the highway. And while I'm driving, I'm saying to myself, oh my goodness, I am tired. I said, this can be, this can cause a tragedy. You know, just driving as tired as I am and going to work at the wee hours of the morning. And then all of a sudden it just hit me. I can do a film about this, just what's happening. And literally, Daddy's home came to me just like plain as day. And I pulled over on the side of the road and I just started typing it in my notes, the whole synopsis of what Daddy's home was going to be. I put it in my notes and then I went back to it later. And that's where the inspiration from Daddy's home came from because of what I was feeling at a certain time trying to get to work, exhausted and, and tired, and just the thought of what could happen if I continue to do that anymore, you know? Yeah. And that's why I wrote Daddy's Home. Wow. I can imagine, like what you said, you know, it's pitch black outside at 3 a.m. You're driving, you're driving to work. And this idea of, in order to do this, sometimes this could actually lead to a tragedy of your own just getting to work mm -hmm. and being so tired. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like in, individuals within the industry, that they, they kind of sign up to say, well, I need to be flexible with my hours and because we want to get certain shots in by a certain time because of this lighting and things like that, that they are prepared for that and be able to then think about ways that they can create some protective factors for themselves. Like, oh, I'll only work an eight hour day so I can make sure to have family time, to make sure I'm eating well, to make sure I'm exercising and taking care of myself. Are those options for people? <sighs> well, when you sign up for a job, you know, it's not your decision on what time you get off or you go in, you know, you have the your department heads, you have the production, you know, the producers, the UPM that, you know, decide the schedule, the ADs. And normally it's a 
it's a 12 to 16 hour day. But since COVID has happened, now the days and the hours have shifted to where it's not as long of an hour, a long of time for you to work on set. So now with COVID happening, we are getting off a little bit earlier than we normally did. But prior to COVID, that it wasn't your decision, you know, you just had to figure out how to juggle being at home with your family, you know, being able to have family time, work time, health time, mental time, you know, it was the juggle constantly. And I feel like right now it's a better, we can juggle it a little bit easier now because of COVID, which I feel like was a blessing in disguise as well as, you know, all of the other things that have been happening uh, in the world. But it has changed the mindset of film sets and how we do things because now they're really concerned of making sure that people stay healthy, which means reduced hours because if they're having reduced hours, they're able to get rest. And when you get rest, you can remain a little more healthy so that you don't, you know, get sick or anything. So it helps now, but before it wasn't an option. Yes, I can imagine with COVID, there are increased levels of concerns and guidelines even as to what individuals can be exposed to on set, how long you can be on set. And I see what you mean it being almost a blessing in disguise because it kind of forced the needle to be pushed that yes. we have to be thoughtful regarding individuals' work yes. environments. Yes, yes. And that's exactly what's happening now because I don't think I've ever gotten off from work when the sun was still up, you know? I've always worked like 16, 18 hour days and, uh, and too, too tired and exhausted to even be home with my family. As in daddy's home, he was always tired and exhausted and he didn't make dinner, you know, he didn't get to play with his kids. And these are things that matter in life when you know, you're, you have a family, you want to be with your family, but you also have to take care of your family as well. So it's just a juggle, a constant juggle and just trying to figure it out so that you can have the both the best worlds. Hear more of this interview at Best Psychology and Film on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, and where podcasts are hosted. Want to make your film psychologically rich? Visit our website at www.psychmindedmedia.com to collaborate. And find more on Instagram at psychmindedmedia. Created with works by...